Hello, everyone, and welcome to It's Your Voice, a podcast by me, Anita De Francesco. And this is a hybrid of topics under mindfulness, sexuality, and relationships. This podcast was born out of the DonnaGentilliStory.com, which is a book I wrote that can be found on Amazon uh, about a woman who was silenced at a very young age, and 1985 to be exact, and I am her voice, so this podcast was born out of that, but it is also dedicated to all the voiceless women of the world. May your voice be heard. And so today's topic is going to be honesty and communication, creating divine relationships. This is episode number four. So what does that mean to create divine relationships? Well, first of all, during a relationship, it is important to take responsibility for your actions. Each and every one of us have um, this responsibility once we get involved uh, emotionally with someone to honor their feelings. It's all about the feelings and being concerned and, and having compassion and empathy toward each other. Why are you in a relationship? To grow emotionally, to support each other's feelings. No one controls the relationship, keeping that in mind. It belongs to both of you. But sometimes someone or one of you want to control the relationship. And this is where the uh, limitations come, putting the lid on the other person, not allowing the other person to have their voice. And this can create a lot of pain in the very end. So the goal is, because a lot of people get into relationships, they're insecure, they want to jump into it, they want to have all this sex in five months, something they could have had over a course of 10 years. And they um, they fail to see the light. They fail to create space. So one of the things is communicating your faults and desires in the very beginning. When you meet someone, you want to express to them what weaknesses and faults you have and let them know who you are. And to see if this is something that they can go forward with in the relationship. Sometimes if you tell someone you had a, um, you know, you have addictions say, or something else in your past, they may not want to go forward in the relationship or that you've had a history of uh, abusiveness. You have to discuss these things in the beginning. And also an important thing to do is also to dedicate the relationship and dedicate your sexuality, your sexual time with this person it's, it's so easy to go off the grid and go out and, and start to see others, but why are you in the relationship? You have to decide what that is and communicate that to your partner. Yes. It's always good to be friends at first, not boyfriend, girlfriend right away. A lot of time, because of these insecurities, people jump into being a boyfriend and girlfriend and then they feel it goes too far. It's nice to be friends in the beginning, and as you develop this exclusivity or commitment over the course of so many months or even a year, it could take a good year before you decide you want to be exclusive, then you can start to call yourself a boyfriend and a girlfriend. When we have communication and honesty, relationships go a very long way. Again, coming back to, are you the type that jumps in? Are you desperate? Are you needy? Do you need to have a body next to you? Are you alone and lonely? These are no reasons to jump into a relationship. Think first before acting. Make sure that you're ready for the relationship. Your relationships are only as good as the quality of your life. They are only as good as the quality of your life. If you are holding grudges, this can create bitterness and anger toward your partner in the relationship. You don't want to bring anger into the relationship from what from whatever the anger is from in your past. It could be old anger, armor, dormant anger in the cells, in the body. We want to work on ourselves, create more clarity <clears throat> so that when that one, that divine person comes along, you're ready. And if you become wrapped in the wrong, in, in the wrong, you, you can't enjoy the present. So once we become wrapped into the wrong, into the anger, then we're not enjoying the present. 
people that jump into relationships and that are holding grudges have limitations they have anxiety they it's very sad because they lose the valuable and enriching connectedness with others and this is so important in creating moments in life because of the subconscious anger that triggers and this is the armor it's in the subconscious body below the belly button keeping in mind happiness is a choice let's breathe everyone you're listening to it's your voice and i am your host anita de francesco there are three a's take that breath that help constitute a good relationship attention affection and appreciation and i will let you decipher that yourself look it up think about it see if you can become that building the self-integrity building each other up rather than tearing each other down this giving each other this permissiveness to be who you are to accept who you are accept your partner's past if you cannot accept the partner's past then you cannot go forward in the relationship here are some questions. Tantra, tantrawisdomismywork.com. Uh, I'm a love and relationship coach and psychotherapist. And you can ask your partner some questions. What I like about you, what I appreciate about you. Or these are statements, actually. Or if I could change something about my relationship. So what I'd like you to do is sit on two pillows and create this sort of sacred space, this bubble. And <clears throat> within that, I want you to honor the moment. You can light a candle, you can have some incense, and I want you to go back and forth and hear each other with your full body and your full senses, not just with your ears. And when one speaks, one listens. The other speaks, the other one listens. The, the etiquette of communication, listening and hearing your partner with a full body. So uh, some of the other things you can come up with, again, if I could change something or what I like about myself, what I like about you, what I appreciate about you. So ha this helps create clarity within a relationship. And when you have the clarity, you're giving the space right there. And this allows the love to permeate and transform, allowing you to learn to balance out giving and receiving. Now, the giving and receiving are very much Tantra exercises that we work to help you understand that there is, there is a balance. It's never going to be 100%, but at least you can work toward it. And when you have good communication, that strengthens the bond of the relationship, folks. It strengthens the bond. Oh, my goodness. How great can that be? Listening, again, with the whole body, not just the ears. Honesty builds trust and gives freedom. So this, te this can teach you great lessons in life. It builds trust. And it encourages freedom. Some of the things that require you to, to encourage and the opportunity of opening up to honesty and communication is, is patience, intuition, having, having this flexibility. So when you are honest, you learn patience. You learn to hear. You learn how to be more perceptive and flexible. So there's no assuming anymore. There's no excuse to twist your partner's words or intentions around. How about that? When you're honest, you don't have to be that uh, political person who twists the words around. You can just be who you are. Oh, isn't that great to be who you are? So this means you're accepting. And couple, couples generally regularly deceive each other. This is a known fact that couples regularly deceive each other. Now there's what we call attention intention. And when you have this attention intention, your actions match and your, your, your um, emotional, your physical and your thoughts align. So your thoughts line up with your actions and your feelings. And that's what we want to get to when we have this, what we call this balance. You're listening to it to your voice. I'm your host, Anita De Francesco, and <clears throat> let's take a breath. Got a little bit more to go for you here, folks. Um, this is coming to you every Tuesday. It's episode number four, and how to be more honest. So there are steps to take. 
in, in, in steps to, and there are relationship rules, but we'll get into that another time. Take the responsibility for you and your partner's emotions. I will leave you with that for this moment to think about it. Taking the responsibility, just like a parent takes the responsibility for loving the child and continuing with that love. Know yourself. And the way to get to honesty is to know yourself, accept yourself. Understand what you think and feel about the world around you. And again, that goes back to the action and snatching the words. So aligning the feeling, the action, and the thought. Being direct. Having the substance with the form. And then just taking another breath, folks, here. One thing that people tend to not notice is that accepting your partner as a separate person, looking at them as an individual, they are a person. And the last thing that I'm going to leave you with for today is when you are in that divine relationship, because honesty and communication will get you to that divine relationship is what we are creating here. You will have this reverence. You will hold your partner in reverence. And reverence is a profound, a profound adoring, an attitude of deep respect. And when you come to that point in the relationship, you will feel discovered, you will feel loved, and you will feel honored. Thank you for tuning in to It's Your Voice. I have been your host, Anita DeFrancesco. You can find me at tantrawisdom.com. This program is dedicated to all the voiceless women of the world. May your voice be heard. And it was born out of the DonnaGentiliStory.com. You may find that book on Amazon. Thank you.